Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall for this short tutorial on using real coal in your modelling. As you can see here I've put a lump of coal into a plastic bag and I'm taking a hammer and giving it a good bashing. What I'm trying to do is grind down the coal into small enough chunks that would be representative in double O scale. With hindsight I probably should have used a slightly more durable bag but just make sure if you are following this process that you use an area that is easily cleaned up. In this case I've gone with a garage floor. Now once I've finished the hammering process I take a sieve and pour the contents into that. This will help weed out any of the larger lumps that you don't want to have and just give it a good shake. The sieve has holes of approximately a millimetre, millimetre and a half in diameter so it's a good sort of size for double O scale. Uh, just repeat this process until you're happy with the quantity of coal that you have depending on the project that you're using it for. In this case I'm going to fill the coal staves that I built some time ago and I'm just taking a little scoop and I'm filling up each compartment until I'm satisfied. Uh, don't be concerned if you spill some over the sides. No doubt these staves in reality were quite filthy places and spillages would have been a common occurrence. And if anything, it'll just add an, an additional bit of realism to the scene. Once you're happy, it's time to apply some water or you can use isopropyl alcohol. You want to make sure you give it a good dousing. That water or alcohol really needs to soak in through the coal just to help whenever we use the PVA mix to bond it all together. Now I'm using the same sort of mixture that you would use whenever you're ballasting. So that's about a 50% uh, water and 50% PVA solution all mixed together with a little added dish soap just to help it to all flow and bind together. You do need to apply quite a liberal amount of this to get it really soaked down in through the coal. I find certainly with coal that with it being such a dusty material that the glue tends to sit on top of it and it may just be necessary to apply additional water or alcohol afterwards just to help it soak down in through. Also, don't forget to apply the glue to those areas around the outside of the staves just to help bind all that down as well. It probably is better to apply more glue than you really actually need uh, just so you don't have to repeat this process again. It will dry out eventually, uh, maybe two to three days depending on the temperature in the room that you're working in. Now once you've this done, just take a piece of paper towel and soak up any of that additional glue that's seeping out from the stays. I find with PVA the only downside of it is if you're using it for this sort of thing is it can dry a little bit shiny. So mopping up that additional glue on the outside of the uh, on your surfaces will just help to reduce that. You'll also find that the coal itself can appear a little bit too shiny with the, the glue drying on top of it. So what I would, I'm also going to do is add another layer of PVA glue to the top. And once this is done, I'm going to sprinkle some more coal on top of this PVA 
and that will be our final layered surface. So it will have a much more realistic look than that shiny finish that you get with the PVA. And that more or less completes the scene. The only thing to add now are some additional features. I'm going to be using a conveyor belt. This still needs painted, but it's just nice to set the scene now. And we've got a couple of figures as well, shoveling that coal. These figures have actually just come from the old Airfix or Dapple range of trackside figures, and they work perfectly well for this scenario. And I've also got a couple of coal bags. Again, these need painted. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll just finish with a few photos. Chat again soon. Bye.